Okay. Um, welcome to the talk, Slurp is that long life Slurp, a new shiny approach to user mode networking QEMO. Uh, but first, actually, what Kubeweird can, could do with it. So hi, I'm Alona Paz. I'm part of the container native uh, virtualization team at Red Hat. I'm a maintainer of uh, Kubevert and uh, in the past of Overt uh, Engine, Backend, uh, and UI. Uh, Stefano is uh, the one uh, that uh, developed Pesty and uh, knows uh, all the details about uh, how it works. Uh, but I know why uh, we in Kubevert uh, really needed it and uh, how uh, we in Kubevert uh, are using it. And I'm Stefano Brivio. I'm a kernel developer when I get the chance. Um, I'm with Virtual Networking. I hope I say the name of the team right uh, at Rada. And when I hear about pods, I don't think of Kubernetes. I get hungry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's why we really need Alona for this, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't know uh, the context. Um, this talk is not about, so let's, you might have high expectations, so let's reset them. Um, it's, it's just a tiny bit about Slurp. It's not about Rust, I'm sorry. Um, but it's also not about microservices. Could be worse. And it's not about the cloud, I swear. So it is a, a bit, just a bit, about uh, what is Kubernetes, what is Kubert, and uh, We'll explain about uh, the existing uh, Kubernetes networking approaches and uh, why uh, those approaches uh, were not enough and uh, we needed uh, to think about uh, a new approach, PESTI. And uh, finally, we will explain about what is PESTI and uh, how it works. So what is Kubernetes? Uh, Kubernetes, it is an open source system. Uh, it is used uh, to automate uh, the deployment, scaling, and management of uh, containerized applications. The smallest uh, deployable and executable unit uh, that Kubernetes has uh, is called a pod. A pod is basically a group of containers that share resources. Uh, from the network perspective, uh, a pod is a group of containers that share the same network namespace. Kubevert. Uh, Kubevert uh, is an add-on uh, that uh, extends Kubernetes. It adds resources uh, for virtual machines. Uh, so with Kubert, it is possible to run virtual machines alongside pods in a Kubernetes cluster. The virtual machines can be managed in the same manner that regular, pod, uh, that regular pods are managed uh, in the Kubernetes cluster with the same tools like uh, kubectl, for example. Uh, since uh, the basic unit uh, of Kubernetes uh, is a pod, uh, the virtual machine, uh, we are running it inside the pod. Actually, we are running the virtual machine inside a container that is running uh, inside the uh, pod. And uh, in this container, we are running uh, the virtual machine, libvirt, and the QEMO. Uh, we are connecting the virtual machine networking uh, to the pod networking. Uh, so the virtual machine uh, can uh, communicate uh, with the other entities uh, in the cluster. And the other entities in the cluster can communicate uh, with the virtual machine. Again, the same way that communication with pods uh, is done. Service meshes. Uh, so service meshes are one of the main reasons that uh, we needed PESTI, so I will explain a bit about them. Uh, there are different implementations of service meshes. Uh, one of the famous ones is the open source uh, project uh, Istio. Uh, so service mesh is basically a way to control uh, how different parts in the system uh, share data uh, between uh, one and the other. Uh, the architecture of uh, service meshes uh, in the Kubernetes cluster is that uh, inside uh, each one of the pods that uh, is managed uh, by the service mesh, uh, a sidecar proxy is added. A sidecar uh, is a Kubernetes term uh, for uh, a container uh, that is not running uh, the main application uh, of the pod. Uh, so to each one of the pods, a sidecar uh, proxy is added, uh, and uh, all the sidecar proxies are uh, connected to each other, and uh, they form uh, uh, the network mesh. Uh, the sidecar proxies uh, controlling uh, the data uh, that is sent to and from uh, the applications uh, in the pod uh, that uh, they are running in. Uh, 
Uh, so since uh, this uh, sidecar proxy is just a container uh, that is running inside the pod, and uh, it assumes that the other applications that it manages uh, their data are also just yet another containers in the pod. So uh, the sidecar uh, proxy may assume that uh, it shares the same network namespace with uh, the other applications in the pod. It may assume that it can uh, see the sockets and the processes uh, of the applications, that it can do socket redirection, port mapping, IP mapping, that it can see the addresses and the routes uh, of the pod. And also it may assume that uh, the data that it controls uh, comes from uh, the user space uh, of the pod. So in case of applications that are running in uh, regular containers, it is easy to meet uh, those assumptions. But in our case, when we are uh, running our applications uh, inside the VM guest, it is much harder to meet uh, those requirements. The application in the VM guest is running uh, in its own uh, separate uh, network namespace. It has its own uh, kernel and user space. So uh, it's uh, not easy at all uh, to answer uh, those uh, assumptions. Uh, so KubeVirt today has uh, several ways of how to bind, how to connect uh, the VM uh, network to the pod network. Uh, the two main options that we have uh, are called bridge binding and masquerade binding. In the case of uh, bridge binding, what basically happens is that all the networking information is removed from the pod interface and applied on the VM interface. So we can see in the diagram that uh, the interface of the pod, the one in uh, the green uh, P pod, uh, we see that it doesn't have IP address and it's just, not just the IP address, all the networking information was removed from it and it was applied on the pod interface, so we, uh, on the VM interface. So we can see on the VM interface, it has address uh, 20301131. This is the original address of the pod. So it was removed from the pod and moved to the VM interface. Uh, the guest and uh, the pod interface uh, are directly connected with layer two connectivity. We have a bridge that uh, one uh, part of it is uh, connected uh, to the VM interface and the other one uh, is connected uh, to the pod interface. Uh, in this kind of binding, uh, we cannot run sidecars, we cannot run extra containers inside the pod that is running uh, the VM because any data that enters the pod, enters the 880 of the pod, it directly goes uh, to the VM guest because uh, there is a direct uh, layer two connection. The other binding that we have is called masquerade binding. In masquerade binding, uh, the VM is basically sitting uh, behind the NAT. NF tables rules uh, inside the pod are used uh, to masquerade and uh, denot the traffic uh, from and uh, to the VM. Uh, we can see that uh, the VM uh, guest has uh, internal AP, 10.0.1.2, it is uh, internal AP. The VM is not directly connected uh, to the pod interface, it is just connected to a bridge inside uh, the pod. So any traffic that goes from uh, the VM, it lands uh, on the bridge. The bridge is the default gateway of uh, the VM. And uh, then it is uh, masqueraded because we have uh, NF table rules and uh, the other way around uh, we have uh, DNA rules. Uh, in this uh, binding, we can have sidecars uh, there is no uh, direct connection, so we can have uh, sidecars. But there are other assumptions that uh, the service mesh uh, has that are not met here. For example, uh, the data that arrives uh, from the guest applications, it doesn't arrive uh, from the user space of the pod. It doesn't land there because it goes uh, directly to the kernel space. It bypasses the user space. Uh, we are using uh, the NF table, so it uh, goes just uh, via the kernel space uh, of the pod. So uh, this assumption uh, is not met. In both of the bindings, a user or any entity in the cluster that uh, wants to communicate uh, with the VM, it is using uh, the pod IP, the original uh, pod IP. So besides the fact that, uh, as uh, presented in the previous slides, that uh, we don't have a seamless integration uh, 
with the service meshes, uh, with the, these two bindings, uh, we have uh, some more uh, disadvantages with them. Uh, we had to implement them uh, from scratch by ourselves. We had uh, to implement the DHCP server. If we want multicast, we have to implement it too. Another disadvantage is that uh, our pod, the pod that is running the VM, uh, it is unprivileged pod. It doesn't have net admin, it doesn't have uh, net row. As we saw in the diagrams, we are adding tab device, we are adding bridge in the masquerade binding, uh, we are editing uh, the NF tables. Those requires at least net admin, we don't have it. So we had to use uh, some tricks uh, to make it work. Uh, it wasn't uh, straightforward uh, at all. So because of these uh, disadvantages, uh, we started thinking together with uh, Stefano's team about uh, a new binding. Uh, this binding is called uh, PAST. Uh, so in a PAST binding, uh, it is implementing a translation layer between uh, layer two and uh, layer four. Uh, we can see in the diagram that we don't add any extra network devices uh, to the pod. We don't have a bridge, we don't have tap, we don't have any of them. We just have a process, a regular process, uh, the past process. Uh, this process is communicating uh, with the guest uh, using a Unix domain uh, socket and uh, communicating uh, with the pod interface uh, using uh, regular sockets. Uh, a sidecar proxy uh, can run uh, inside the pod and also all the other requirements that uh, a, service mesh, a service mesh has are met as well because all the traffic that uh, the VM is sending is resent from uh, the PESTI process. So uh, the sidecar proxy sees it as if it was sent by uh, internal process that is running uh, inside the pod. So the advantage of PASTI, the first one uh, is the obvious that we already said, uh, is that uh, we have seamless integration uh, with service mesh because uh, uh, the assumptions that the uh, service mesh has uh, are met. Uh, also, uh, we share a tool that is universal. Uh, Kubernetes doesn't have to implement it from scratch. It is a universal tool. It will be in the future part of uh, QAMO and Libvirt. And uh, also, it doesn't require extra network uh, security capabilities. Uh, CapNet admin, CapNet row uh, are not required. Uh, PESTI is already supported by Kubert, but in the future, we are thinking of even replacing our existing uh, masquerade and bridge binding uh, with PESTI. So let's have another look, uh, or a deeper look at that. Uh, orange box that was in the, in the previous diagram that's, that's passed. Um, so it essentially implements a translation between layer two frames. So what you have on the left is a uh, Unix domain socket coming from QEMO uh, with Ethernet frames. And magically, on the right, you have layer four sockets. So TCP, UDP, ICMP, just echo. Uh, that's what the kernel allows. Um, so and, and you see that this needs internal knowledge, of course, of uh, TCP, UDP, like when this thing sees uh, Ethernet frames, you need to, to infer that there is a TCP connection going on and it will need to open a socket on, on the right. So the right is, is the host and the left is the guest. Um, now, um, you might have thought of Slurp when you saw that, maybe. Um, so it also, it does essentially the same thing. It maps QEMO, a QEMO interface, not a Unix domain socket, but a QEMO interface, to host socket. So it implements user mode networking. It's very simple. It doesn't need any security privileges, uh, but it, would, it was really uh, written for a different purpose. So um, there were a few problems with, 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 those, with those topics. Uh, in particular. So there is no focus on performance uh, in Slurp. It forces NAT, so you cannot have the same addressing and routing in host and, and guest, which is actually convenient for um, the, the pods you saw before in Kubeert. Uh, it implements a full TCP stack. It, the, the, the IPv6 support is there now, but it's uh, rather partial, so there is no port mapping to the guest, for example. Uh, it runs in the same process at context as QEMO, which is, uh, might be a bit problematic. And also, there are a lot of advanced features uh, that might also be um, 
exposing a lot um, in terms of, of um, security attack uh, surface. Um, so now that we talked about pods, let's talk about the arguments to receive message. Um, um, so on the left, uh, okay, here I'm presenting the, the data path. That's a basic data path uh, that Fast implements. Um, so on the left, just imagine that you have QEMU, you have it in the other room. Um, and uh, it connects the past with a Unix domain socket. Um, here you have uh, just um, one big buffer, so no per, per connection buffer. So that's a notable difference with Slurp. And it allows us to have no dynamic memory allocation. So we are abusing the kernel buffers, the host kernel buffers, of course, um, to uh, buffer things for us. Um, so when we get frames, we just split them, spread them there. Um, and it also means that, um, well, we need to um, actually, sorry, uh, this is a bit the other way around. That was the other slide. So this is host to guest, okay. So the, the packets are coming from the sockets now. Um, and it's anyway very, very similar to the next slide. They all end up uh, on a buffer and we, um, no, wait a moment. This is host to guest, yeah, okay, right. Um, so um, we, we cannot queue those buffers, so we cannot really remove them from the queues until they are acknowledged from the from from QEMO, from the guest. Uh, so we need to pick at them first and then flush the buffers once we, we know that they've been received. This is true for TCP. This is not the case for UDP, of course. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, QEMO sends Ethernet frames. You have a big buffer and uh, again, no per connection buffer, so no need for uh, dynamic memory allocation. Uh, and PAST takes those Ethernet frames, checks which socket does it need to go to, um, and, and spreads them. And uh, we have a similar mechanism to avoid implementing a further congestion control, which is also the, uh, which is actually implemented in Slurp. So we don't do it. Uh, we just ask. Uh, the host kernel when we can acknowledge segments. Um, another difference is uh, you see on the bottom, those are three, the usual uh, three um, TCP full state machines. So you have the one on the guest and the one on the host. Those are implemented by the Linux kernel. And Slurp actually implements a full TCP state machine as well. Um, with past, so if we bypass Slurp and we go to the top, we have something much simpler, uh, and the fact that we know that we have a, um, a TCP stack on the host kernel allows us to have just three states, um, have just a couple of flags, and that makes the code, the implementation much, much simpler. Um, so let's cover a few security topics. Um, what, what PASS provides is uh, sandboxing, so all the users, all the namespaces that we don't really need are unshared, so the PASS process doesn't see anything after it starts. Uh, it doesn't require any capabilities because it doesn't create network interfaces. Uh, that's the same as Slurp. It doesn't run as root uh, for real. Um, it doesn't do dynamic memory allocation, which is a notable difference. Uh, the second profiles are rather strict, so it's 26 syscalls. Um, doesn't have any external dependencies, ships with SE Linux and AppArmor profiles, and it's not written in Rust, at least for the moment. Um, so um, it could have some advantages uh, to, to write it in Rust. We would ensure that there are no stack-based overflows, for example. Um, on the other hand, um, it, it it is probably possible, but it's quite hard uh, to completely avoid dynamic memory allocation unless we use the Rust core library um, instead of the standard one. Um, however, we have anyway some buffer alignment um, in, this, in this old trick um, that would mean that we would need uh, to use some unsafe code. So the the Usability of Rust here is, is a bit questioned, even though it should be possible and it's something that we are still considering. Um, let's have a look at performance topics. So you might think 
well, user space, uh, net, user mode networking, okay, it's a toy. Um, however, it's actually not that bad. Uh, it kind of competes, so those are tests uh, we made against uh, the existing um, bindings in, in Kubevirt. So this is just that filter that you have on the, those left, those bars on the left. Um, and POST is actually faster if you stick to once a single tap queue. If you then get to eight queues, so the bars in the middle, yeah, then we have a gap. So that's, that's still um, a factor of two, at least for biggish packets. For, for small packets, POST is, is actually faster. Um, why? Because we have a few tricks. So the guests can use whatever MTU because we don't actually send the guest packets, we just send flat data and the host kernel will deal with segmentation. So there are essentially no packets uh, when we write to sockets. It's, it's just payload. Um, we um, check some using AVX2 routines on x86, of course. Um, we have some pre-cooked buffers. Um, so those buffers you saw early, they are there forever and they are most almost pre-populated, so whatever we can write already, we, we write it. Um, we don't have any congestion control additionally, and we are now trying to work on the difference between those two bars. So um, the, to solve this gap that we have with multi-tap, multi-queue tap, uh, by one idea that looks quite promising is to add a vhost user backend, so we would have one copy instead of two. Um, where do you get this? Okay, so first off, it's Linux only for the moment because we really interact with the kernel. We ask the kernel a lot of things like, uh, what, are your, what is your, your current sending window and how many segments have been acknowledged and how big is the buffer? Um, so this is now probably doable with most flavors of PSD, but we didn't do it yet. Fedora packages available that will be true actually in two days. So they are in the repositories, but it's still in the testing repositories for Fedora 35 and on. Um, for other distros, we have unofficial packages. Um, the Kubeware tech preview that Alona mentioned earlier, um, we have a POC for Kata containers. Um, the queue integration, yeah, as far as I know, that series is not applied yet, um, but uh, Laurent Vivier, um, wrote uh, a proper patch set implementing native F Unix socket. Until then, it, we, we use a wrapper. And I'm working right now um, on a libvirt patch. So there is already a patch available, but um, I'm, I'm working on proper support also using the native F Unix uh, socket. Um, those are links to lists, so the, the, uh, email, the, the patch workflow is an email-based one. Uh, there is a bug tracker, there is a chat, and I wanted to quickly mention an uh, incarnation of PAST, which is called PASTA, which is the same trick, actually implemented by the same binary, it's just a different command that uh, will do the same story for, for namespaces, so it's an equivalent to um, Zilirp for NetNS. I already proposed it to Podman developers. They said, great, but where are the packages? Um, so yeah, then I started packaging. Um, and that's it, actually. Um, how many minutes do we have? One minute for questions. So, yeah. Are you going to replace Smurf? I mean, are you going to get rid of Smurf? Um, I don't know. Because, um, huh? Ah, uh, oh, sorry. Can you replace Lirp? Are you going to replace Lirp? That, that was the question. I think it can replace Lirp. Um, right now, I'm not uh, thinking of, of uh, proposing it as an alternative for net user because, well, it might be used like that, um, but. Yeah, it, it should be the case. I mean, it depends a bit. I, I didn't really ask the QEMU community, you know, until now. So, I think so. Uh, you will tell me, you, you guys will tell me. Any other question? Yeah. Do you have to pull on the axe or are there any specific? Do I have to pull on the? On the TCP axe. On the TCP axe. Um, I actually don't 
uh, but I have some timeouts. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, opportunistic polling, so usually not, but um, there are some, um, um, what are they called, time RFD um, events uh, to w which we put in an ePoll descriptor, and um, yeah, if an act doesn't come for too long, yes, we actually have to ask the kernel again, hey, what happened to this? Yeah. Any other question? Yep. Uh, does the sidecar, so the, the, the sidecar communicating with the pod, uh, that goes through the kernel instance, so I don't want to see the kernel instance. The sidecar going to the pod, so the traffic between sidecar and pod go through the kernel each time. Um, Yes, uh, yeah, uh, so essentially, well, it depends. I mean, uh, with the VOST user backhand, uh, we would probably, I guess you mean by between sidecar and VM. So, okay, the VM here becomes part of the pod. Um, so right now, yes, and it goes an awful amount of times back and forth because it, it's actually going to the Unix domain socket and back to user space. Um, past gets it, and there are two copies. Those are cheap, but still there are two copies. Uh, so there is a read and a send on the socket. Um, so with VOST user, we would reduce it a lot because we bypass QEMU, essentially. So QEMU would just be in charge of setting up the, the data path. And then the, well, we would get it from the uh, guest memory, and then we would just have one copy that is uh, from that buffer to sending on the socket. So for that particular communication, there's no way you compare between? For that part of communication, it doesn't? particular communication yeah. between the sidecar and what is inside the, the pod, inside the VM. There is no way or way compared to There is no real? There is no way or way. No real win in uh, No real win in, in terms of performance or, uh, no, not really. But yeah, uh, with the host user, we should be on par of what's currently being done. Uh, so our goal is to, to be the same, not to exceed it. <laughs> Unfortunately, but I mean, it's pretty good, uh, I think. So what, 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 tap, what, what multi, -queue, multi -queue tap does is, yeah. The big win I expect is for communicating inside. Outside, outside. outside. Um, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Any other question? We've been too fast. Yes. Okay. The, the longest minute ever. <laughs>